Hi, my name is what? My name is who? Shika 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 mononosuke. All right, y'all, welcome to Otaku Talk OD, and let's jump right into it. Alright, so first of all, all I have to say is, man, this chapter felt really, really fucking short. Like, I can't even, I can't even lie to you. Like, I was initially disappointed when I read the chapter. It just felt short. Um, I, I read it so fast. I wish it was longer. All the hype and all the buildup for the last uh, couple chapters have had really got me super, super hype. And I was super, super excited to see what goes on in this chapter. And at first, the first read-through, I was kind of disappointed. Like, not a lot happened, but, you know, I read... I read, you know, two, three more times, you know, to prepare for this episode. And every time I read, um, reread, it seemed like there was more and more information. But I do, it was one of those crave more substance chapters, but it was still a great chapter. So first of all, as usual, let's jump right into the cover page. So we're still on Pound. And bro, does Oda hate Pound? Like, first, he never gets to meet his daughters. And is stuck in the um, forest, um, what's it called? The forgetful forest for, I think, years, right? And he's buried. So he's just stuck there for years. He finally gets out and then nearly dies protecting his his uh, kids, right? And they don't even know. And then he somehow survives, finds both his daughters, and then is abandoned by them and left behind for the Marines. And if that's not bad enough, the salt in the wound and the ir irony of it all is they sail away with a flag that says, that says, I love family. Like, Oda, why keep this man alive just to torture him? I don't get it. This is cruel and unusual punishment. Why are we doing this to Pound? Anyway, that, that cover scene just made me so sad, man. It made me really sad. I don't know why we're doing Pound this dirty, but Oda don't fuck with him. <laughs> anyway, moving on into the actual chapter. Let's get into it. What the fuck was the Kanjuro fight? Like, seriously, what was that? Like, off-screen fight, Kanjuro's is on the ground, lackluster as hell. Like, no, no, I'm not satiated. I'm not okay with that. I'm not happy with that. I don't think Kanjuro's dead. It's just, it seems too simple. It seems too easy. He was so cocky. He was so cocky and, like, you know, re prepared before. And just to be that cocky and prepared and then just to be left, bef um, left on the ground with no exposition like it just doesn't make sense to me and like there's no real sense of like you know justice or like revenge or anything like that it was just you know it was too it was too short it was too easy we didn't get to see shit and honestly that one little panel flashback un unfazed me it didn't even do like it honestly had absolutely no effect on me like i didn't feel bad like there wasn't any kind of build-up so like i'm telling you right now just like Orochi, he's not dead either. Like, Oda's going to have these two people that everyone thinks is dead emerge and screw up the plans. But there's no way there's dead. There's, I just don't believe Oda would do that to us. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me because this fight seemed like it was like really big and hyped up and then nothing came of it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. Um, next, uh, yo, Orochi's ninja and samurai captain... Um, and general dropped loyalty to him like a bad habit. Yo said, <laughs> Yo said, join us or die. They said, you got my, me and my 5,000 subordinates. You got me and my 5,000 subordinates. They had no qualms switching sides. This was really, really crazy. And I just think that it's um kind of interesting over these last few chapters that there's they've been really stressing this theme of loyalty honor and respect i mean it's wano right it's japan right it's samurai right so it makes sense but like it was just so crazy how like just complete and utter abandonment of loyalty and like you know there's the side of well they were gonna get killed but like you know you're supposed to stand up for and die for what you believe in and so clearly no one told them that so that's why even uh what's his name hero goros uh the former uh yakuza guy was freaking out about it he was like where's your otter i was like somebody better help him find it because that shit was non-existent 
Um, I also love how the festival is going on outside and everyone is kind of oblivious to what's happening right now to the whole raid, which I think is perfect. It sets the perfect stage for Luffy to inevitably de um, dethrone Kaido. Um, and it's basically one thing we see in all of One Piece is when Luffy has the big boss battle, when he defeats the boss it usually typically has to be done in front of the masses it has to be done in front of everyone that um that the boss has subjugated has caused fear and suffering like they have to see it for their own eyes and so i think that this festival is just going to be a really great stage for him to dethrone um kaido and set the people of wano free now sorry about that that's my phone i need i should put it on mute but um all right next up yo respect 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 when people look back on this chapter it's gonna be all about res put respect on my boy momo's name momo nosuke shogun momo nosuke out here doing it out here living up to you know his father's expectations his retainers expectations yo like i said what my name is who my name is what shika 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 momo nosuke yo kato said hey you never answered my question several years ago. This is your chance to get off the hook. Who are you? And, you know, he very easily, very easily could have bitched out. Very easily could have been like, I'm a nobody. Oh, I'm not. I'm not the son of Kazuki Odin. But, you know, he said no on my pride, on everything that I stand for, for the people that follow me, for the people I look up to so I can see my parents with, like, my head held high in the afterlife. Like, I am Momonosuke Kazuki. And... That was beautiful. I think that's what all of us have wanted. Um, we all know that he can't fight, but he wants to. But just to express that resolve, the resolve on its own, like just like what the foundations of what great hockey is made of, that resolve right there is what makes great characters. And that resolve right there is what makes Luffy fight for you. If you have that kind of resolve, like Luffy can kind of understand if you can't fight. Like he gets that. But... If you have the will to fight, if you're willing to risk your life, that's the stuff that gets through to Luffy. And so that right there was just phenomenal. I think everyone really, 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 really fucked with um, Momo this uh, this chapter. Also, thankfully, since Shinobu is literally right there on her way to find him um, and rescue him, and the scabbards are uh, fighting Kaido, he's about to get spirited away like Chiro. Like, she is about to scoop him, free him, and get him out of there while Kaido is occupied with the scabbard. So that's perfect, perfect timing um, on Oda's part. I am extremely, extremely worried for Nami and Carrot, though. It looks like Big Mom is about to take their souls. Um, who can blame her? They seem like really good prospects. Um, so hopefully someone can save them in the meantime. At this point, I don't know exactly who it is. Obviously, they'll be saved. We just don't know by who and what what method. Maybe it's going to be Usopp and Chopper in uh, the Frankie bot. I have no clue. But, um, yeah, someone better get to them quick or they're about to be soulless. They're literally going to have their soul spirited away. So, um, as I, like, read more and more, it just seems like Kaido doesn't really have respect for his crew. Like, at first I thought it was cool that, like, you know, he wants the strongest people in this crew, so he breaks your wills and then adds you. But, like, there's this weird kind of, like, I don't know. There's this weird kind of aspect to it because he gives both uh, Momonosuke and Orochi's people the choice of, like, whether they want to serve him, um, bo both whether they want to serve him or if they want to tell him the truth. And he tells them, like, if they don't, he'll have, um, they'll have his respect. But what is that if you're dead? But at the same time, like, does that mean that the people that give into him don't have his respect? And what does that mean for how he feels and views his crew? Like, you know, we see multiple pirates throughout this series. And some treat their um, crewmates like family. And some treat them as a means to an end. And clearly, Kaido is the latter. And so, like, I just don't feel like he has any respect for his crew at all. And that's another thing. The chapter is all about respect. All about respect from Momo to Orochi's, um, to Orochi, um, to, sorry. It's all about respect from Momo to Orochi's subordinates 
to the scabbers that are still loyal to Odin, even though he's dead. It's a whole thing. And they're facing off potential death. Speaking of which, they're not playing any fucking games, yo. Izo shot the sword out of King's hand, and Nico disarmed Kaido, and they all jump in for the kill, making for one of the most epic panel scenes ever. And you can clearly see they are all super reserved to die, man. They yell, Sunachi, or Sunochi, I don't know how to pronounce it, but basically it means throw away your name and your wits. Um, it's another parallel between Momo claiming his name and then disregarding his name in life, basically. When you throw away your name in this, in this regard, it's equivalent or akin to throwing away your life. And so it's kind of like there's so many like dynamics and parallels um, where it's just like Momo declares his name, they're all, but they're also saying throw away your name, but it's all at the expense of throwing away their life. So like... <sighs> Oda's Oda's so Oda's so good with it, and you know, um, for those of you who don't don't know, it's uh, Sunochi has been a common reoccurring phrase during the Wano arc. Um, the retainers and um, other people from Wano use it a lot. I think Zoro actually taught the word to um, Momonosuke when he trained him for a bit. So this is a very popular phrase, and basically, for those of you that don't really uh, understand or remember. Just think of it like this. It's basically a war cry. It's a it's a it's basically a representation of a test of courage. It's a war cry that helps you to not think about, to not think and just act, despite the burden of potential consequences. Cause let's be real. This is Kaido they're against. Even all nine of them. I really don't think they're gonna do anything significant to Kaido. That's just how it is. He's the strongest creature in the world. And you know, this is the guy that's taking out people way stronger than them. But to be fair, they are doing the damn thing. Um, they got a pretty good jump on him. Kinemon and Kiyoshiro um, seem to have stabbed him. Nico is occupying Kaido's left hand because Kaido like has his left hand on Nico's face like this. But Nico has his right hand free, and it looks like looks like um. Where's it his left hand? One of his hands, um, the one that has the gun, is free, so he could easily maybe in the next chapter hit him with a blast right to the face. Um, and the rest seem prompt to follow up with the attack. So, you know, I they'll do a little bit of something. I don't think it'll be significant, but they are going to land some blows. Um So let's get a little real here. I do, I do anticipate deaths here. Uh, potentially all the scabbards could die. Potentially. I don't think that's going to happen, but you know, I'm not ruling it out. Um, you know, there's a high probability that they could all die. But if I had to bet money, my money is on Inurasha and Raizo, mainly because these two deaths would greatly wound the residents of Zoo, as well as Raizo was kind of fated to die ever since we first went to Zoo and Jack was looking for him and all the minks and all the whatever had to, um, had to suffer and sacrifice and like lose their the swap, witness the destruction of their home and like so I think maybe I think some of the minks got killed and see their brother and sister minks get slaughtered looking for this dude who was there the whole time which by the get by by the way uh, once again was one of the hardest scenes in all of One Piece. One Piece has a bunch of hard scenes, but this was just another hard scene where like yo loyalty ride or die allies like. Like I said, it's, it's themes, man. It's themes here. And, like, what a great theme. So I just think that um, his death would be really good. The reason I say Inu over uh, Nico is just that I don't know why. Even though they're the same age, Inu has always kind of seemed uh, a little bit older to me, a little bit softer to me. And, you know, there's the whole thing that, you know, Cats always land on their feet. And in this case, I'm saying metaphorically, but early, even though it happened earlier a couple of chapters ago. Actually, no. He landed on his face, which was funny. But um, I don't know. Just something leads me towards Eno dying. And Nico just, you know, overall just seems kind of more serious, um, kind of more merciless. And if it if anyone was gonna survive, it was gonna it, it would be Nico, unless now here's a caveat. 
I believe that unless Oda does some hardcore feel shit and has Nico sacrifice himself to save Eno, thusly showing he truly cares about his best frenemy, not allowing another ally to die like they let Odin, because don't forget that one of their biggest, like the, the reason that their contention towards each other started was because they both blame each other um, respectively for the death of Odin. And so I think this would just oh um just make a very beautiful death, a very impactful death. They never they never really got closure. Like they never really you know they we've always seen them fight, we've never seen them be like, yo, I'm sorry, or this wasn't your fault, blah blah blah. Like we never they never got closure, and so for them to get closure like that, I think would just make for some really great storytelling. On top of that, I think that if Nico is the one that dies, um, it'll open up Inu to adopting Nico's savage and merciless nature, which I think would make for a really, really great fight. Anyway, outside of that, um, Kikunoji and Kinemon and Izo have roles to fill, in my opinion. I feel like they have relevance uh, left in the story, so I just don't see them dying. I think they still have some things they can do. Uh, does that mean that they won't die? Absolutely not. But I just, I really don't see it. And you guys know Oda really doesn't like killing people for the most part. So um, I think those guys are safe. Don't quote me on that. I just have a feeling. And after that, I honestly don't really care about the rest of the um, scabbards. No offense, but um, I don't like, there's only a select few scabbards in my opinion of significant worth. And if they were to die, it would kind of feel superfluous or unwarranted because like eh, it would be like empty emotions. Like I said earlier in the beginning of this video, like I didn't really care about that one flashback, especially with how quick and kind of just like unimportant that fight turned out to be, especially after the setup and home Kiko Noji was like, oh, I'm going to make you bleed from the um, bleed in the afterlife. And then just for that, it was like eh, kind of whack. All right. And last but not least, we have Luffy and Yamato. And it is, I don't know why it took this long, but Yamato finally agrees to have Luffy remove the cuffs. And lo and behold, them bitches were explosive. I'm going to be real with you. I did not see that coming. Like, I knew Kata was a dick, but like, this is your kid, bro. This is your fucking kid. But then again, he beat her. He beat her as a child for like wanting to be Odin and some other shit. So like. You know, obviously he was never a great dad, but damn, I didn't know he was a fucking piece of shit. So like, yeah, that's that's fucked up. Kaido is a trash father. Uh, the fact that he, but you know, it just reinforces the fact that he was willing to kill his own child. Just you know, further shows what a savage this man is. So, guess I shouldn't have been surprised, but damn, heartless. Anyway, that is chapter 986 of One Piece. Oh, bro, I am excited. I am loving every minute of this. And I just, the only, the only thing that sucks is just waiting week to week to week to find out what happens next. But it's doing, oh, it's, he's doing a phenomenal job. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching Otaku Taco D. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like the things I had to say. If you have anything to add, please leave them in the comments. Uh, what Which scabbards do you think are going to die? Actually, who in general do you think is going to die in this arc? I'm interested to know, talk to you, debate with you about and speculate and all that stuff. So you know what? Thank you for tuning in and see you next week. Take care.